Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Ali D'Andrea and tonight I am testing the speed on my PSC Evo NXT 33. I have a chronograph, ooh, and this will be my first time ever using the chronograph. I have two different arrows at different weights that I will be testing. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's first talk about the different measures of bow speed. So there are two main standards that are sort of accepted throughout the industry. And I do have some notes so that I don't mess this up. The IBO speed, it stands for International Bow Hunters Organization. They created this standard in which the bow is shot at 80 pounds draw weight, plus or minus two pounds with a 400 grain arrow there is no required draw length and it's shot at point blank range. Now the IBO is listed on almost every bow manufacturer's website, but there is another standard called the ATA. ATA stands for the Archery Trade Association. They created their own standard at which the bow is shot at 70 pounds draw weight, plus or minus two pounds with a 350 grain arrow and with a 30 and a quarter inch draw length. Now the ATA measurement is more precise because they do have a specified draw length, which hence makes it a more precise measurement. So I looked up the speed ratings on my PSE Evo NXT 33, that's a mouthful, and PSE listed the ATA rating of 314 feet per second and the IBO rating at 322 feet per second. So my bow currently is set at just over 52 pounds. I have a 28 and a half inch draw length. And let me show you the arrows that I will be shooting. The first arrow ba -ba -da, is this beauty that I built out specifically for elk season. This is the Easton Axis, uh, has a, let's see if the GPI is on here. This arrow has a 400 spine and a GPI of nine. So nine grains per inch. I added a 50 grain insert to the front to increase my front of center. And the overall weight of this specific arrow is 447 grains. Now, the lighter of the two is this. This is the Trophy Hunter by Guide Gear. It is a 400 spine arrow. The GPI is not on the shaft, but I'll put it on the screen. This arrow is slightly longer in length than my axis arrow and I have a lighted knock on the end of it. So it's a little bit heavier overall than what it will be when I'm actually hunting with it. But this specific arrow that we're testing today has an overall weight of 387 grains. Last thing I wanna to touch on before we shoot is what affects arrow speed. That comes down to your bow's draw weight, your draw length, and the arrow weight. Now there are some subcategories under arrow weight that we'll jump into. First and most obvious is draw weight. So again, my bow is at 52 pounds. Some states do have a legal limit on the lowest poundage that you are legally allowed to shoot in order to hunt. Some states are 45, some states are 40, and there may be others that have different requirements. So it is important before you go hunting to check your state's regulations. I did take a look at some other uh, bow manufacturers, Abby sniffing the camera. <laughs> Abby girl, come here, big girl, come here. Everybody wants to see you. So I did look at some other bow manufacturers and Hoyt has a bow with an ATA rating of 350 feet per second. Now this bow is an absolute tank. They market it for hunting in Africa um, with animals with very thick hides. So obviously that's not going to be the norm for most hunters, but there are bows capable of speeds of 350 feet per second. I'm imagining my bow is gonna be down around, oh, 240 or 230. Guess the low. 
or lower. Oh, I'm kind of nervous actually to see what it is. You can leave a comment down below and guess what you think the speed of my bow is going to be before I shoot it. Next thing that affects speed is draw length. I do have quite a long draw length. My draw length is 28 and a half inches. Now, if you are someone with shorter arms, um, the shorter your draw length, the slower that your bow is going to be. There's nothing that you can do about that. You just have to shoot what fits you the best. So although that is in there, don't, you know, don't worry about it because there's nothing you can do about it anyways. Last thing is arrow weight. So as we discussed, I have two different arrows, one at 387, one at 447. That's a difference of 60 grains. So we are going we are going to see firsthand how that affects the speed of my bow. Um, but within arrow weight, there are a couple things that you can do and mess with your arrows that will affect its weight hence affecting its speed. First thing is the arrow diameter. So the thinner the diameter, the less resistance there is in flight, and overall the lighter that arrow will be. So again, you're playing with the arrow weight. Heavier arrows are slower, lighter arrows are faster. Next thing, arrow length. So I did touch on that a little bit with the Trophy Hunter arrows they are a little bit longer which just increases the weight overall i like to cut my arrows one inch shorter than my draw length although there's no right or wrong answer to this that is just what i have found works best for me in my setup and now it is time to shoot let's do it I want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor for this video, Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide sells all types of outdoor equipment, everything from archery and hunting gear to fishing and boating gear and everything in between. This chronograph that I'm using in today's video is from Sportsman's Guide's website. So if you want to go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description box down below, as well as my coupon code. So you can save yourself a little bit of money. Without further ado, let's get to shooting. So we want feet per second. Did something happen? <laughs> Ooh, baby. Okay, how does that look? Woohoo! <laughs> 234. Ay, caramba. I'm gonna shoot that arrow through two more times and we'll collect the average. Ready? Ooh, 237. Aw, error. Dang it. Whew, 239. On to the guide gear arrow. Let's give it a whirl. Ready. Error, dang it. Maybe I shot that one too low. Error. I wonder what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, keep saying error. We are now at 369. It seems like the chronograph did not like the light and knock. So we pulled that off. I shot it through three or four times and it just kept saying error. So I pulled that off. Nick actually pulled it off. I went and grabbed a new knock. And now the new arrow weight with the standard knock is 360, what was it, nine? Let's continue with our test. So unfortunately, it looks like the low light conditions are actually what's affecting the chronograph, not the light and knock. So I will see you back here tomorrow in the daylight and we'll test out arrow number two. It's the next day. Let's get to shooting this thing. Oh, we did it. It worked. It was totally the low light. 256, baby. Okay. 255. 254. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not the lighted knock actually had anything to do with it. I don't think it did. But again, yesterday was our first time using the chronograph. So I'm actually gonna go grab an arrow with a lighted knock, shoot it through to see if we can get a reading. I have a feeling that we can, well. <laughs> but let's give it a try and then I'll give you some of my final thoughts.
I'm expecting the speeds to be slower with this arrow with the lighted knock because it is heavier. Remember, this lighted knock arrow weighs about 387 grains, while this arrow with the traditional knock weighs about 369 grains. So let's shoot it and see what we get. See if we get a reading. There we go, 250. Wow. So it was not the lighted knock. That was a silly thought. So like we predicted, we lost some speed with the addition of the lighted knock, which makes perfect sense because we added some weight to the arrow. So here are the final speeds recorded on the chronograph from each of these different arrow weights out of my PSC Evo NXT 33. I knew that my bow was going to be slow because I can't pull a high poundage. It makes it all the more important for me to tinker and figure out what is going to be the most lethal arrow for this build and for my setup. I love that the chronograph gives me extra data for perfecting my setup or tinkering and just making things more complicated, but also more fun. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. The best time of the year is upon us, so get out and enjoy it. I will see you in the next one.